All right, great. It's Preacher John here in Boulder, Colorado. <clears throat> We're at a brand new location today. It's Foothills Parkway. That comes off the. Uh, let's see that. Let's see if we can turn around here. So people are coming off that hill there. That's a highway that comes out of Longmont, and it comes into here. This is Valemont, and this street, this light right here, when they come to a stop, uh, this is the very first light coming into the city of Boulder. It's a proper Boulder proper, and uh, so this is a kind of a modern gate to the city. Uh, Foothills Parkway is the kind of a bypass around the, the city of Boulder, but it basically goes through Boulder. Uh, the, when I was at 55th and Pearl, uh, that's another mile, you know, probably a mile and a quarter that way. So uh, maybe a little less. It's hard to say exactly. Now this is Valemont. Valemont is a very popular street coming right through here. So I'm also at Valemont and Folsom, if you look at some of my videos. Uh, so, uh, then Foothills, the light starts again. So there's several lights going through town. A couple of, you don't have to stop. And we can see the foot, the foot, arrow, foot you know, the front range, that's an F, uh, front range mountains. These mountains here are directly in front of the Rockies. So, uh, I can see it, but I can just barely see the 14,000 footers right above there. It's really a beautiful place. So today is really, really windy. I hope you can hear me. I got my earplugs in because number one, it's really noisy. Number two, uh, it's very windy. So I have my banner. It's laying down right here at my feet. I can't even lift it up. Uh, today is my first day of using this monopod. Yeah, it's uh, one. Uh, it's kind of like a tripod without the other two. <laughs> it just has one leg. Uh, so it's a one leg deal here. And I'm um, trying it out. It's pretty sturdy. I, I really like hanging on to it. Uh, and all of a sudden I'm nervous. I, I, how come I'm, uh, I'm, I guess I'm nervous because I'm thinking about some of the comments that I saw in my YouTube video last night. Uh, yeah, last night. I did Sunday's video uh, on Monday and on Monday's video, I'm going to do try to do tonight. I'm trying to catch up because Sunday was really, really busy, and I just, I just went straight home and went right to bed after preaching for eight hours. You know, you stand on the street for eight hours, uh, it's uh, it's going to take a toll on your physical body. But, uh, and I guess I'm nervous because uh, I'm not doing things the way most street preachers do it. I don't follow another street preacher. I don't copy another street preacher. I don't copy anybody. There's only one person I copy, and that is Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. That's it. And he gave me a book called the Bible. So I talk to Jesus, my Savior, by faith, and I read his book. He's the Word. He wrote this book. And that's what I do. And if Jesus tells me to do something, that's what I do. I've been doing this for four and a half decades. And I, I have never been a copycat person. Now, there's a couple things that I do. Obviously, my shirt, a lot of people can buy the shirt. People can buy a Bible. They can buy a camera. They can do a lot of things that I'm doing, but I don't copy anybody. Uh, and so what makes me nervous is a lot of, I can't please everybody. So because I can't please everybody, I please one person. I please Jesus Christ. And how I please Jesus get this, I please myself. If I'm happy and I'm being ministered to, which is what these videos do, they minister to me greatly. I enjoy sitting for the two hours and finding all the Bible verses. I enjoy doing the video. It puts me in track. It puts me kind of going on track. It helps me preach in the Word. Man, it's windy out here. Hope you can hear me on this video. It's really about 20 mile an hour winds. Uh, and I do it for me. I don't do it for anybody else. If everybody wants to watch, that's fine, but I'm not doing it for other people. I'm doing it unto Jesus. God told me to do this, and so I'm doing it because he told me to do it. You know, because this is a lot of extra work. It's like two to three, sometimes four extra hours. Wow, it's windy. <laughs> God bless you, man. <laughs> All these truck drivers. Almost blew over with that last gust of wind. 
I was so excited about coming out here. I've been praying for this location for almost two years. Almost two years. About 18 months, I guess. Yeah, about 18, 16 months, something like that. About, yeah, that's about right. 16 months, 18. And I kept seeing myself standing right here at this corner where I'm at. I'm on the uh, southeast corner. But I went to all the corners. I went to that corner across the street, stood there for a while. I went over to that corner, stood there for a while. I went over to this corner, stood there for a while. And the moment I got to the corner where the Holy Ghost told me to stand, immediately peace. I mean, it was like, this is where God wants me, right here. I tell you, there's nothing greater. That's what we're talking about, suffering for the will of God, suffering in the will of God. I'm gonna try to read this Bible verse here if I can. If not, you can always read in the Bible and the verse here. And another thing I'm doing out here, because I'm pleasing myself, I'm into the Bible all the time. I don't read any other minister's books. I hardly watch any more, more I think the last 12 months or longer, I haven't watched anybody else's street preaching videos except for one guy, Brian Cranford. I watch his videos because he makes sense to me. I can relate to him, I don't know why, but it just makes sense because I can tell when he's preaching and when his son is preaching, they love people. They're not trying to dramatize some big event. They're, they're out there laying their life down for people. Too many preachers on the street, they're not laying their life down. They're, they think they're, I mean, it's just, I just deleted everybody. I mean, I know there's a lot, I, you know, I, there's some guys I do watch occasionally Usually on Saturdays, I'll go through a lot of different uh, channels looking to see what's going on, to keep, keep an eye on what's going on. But Brian Cranford, I watch just probably three, four, five times a week just to see what's going on. I, I just, you know, it's really a great encouragement to me. God bless you, Brian. <laughs> keep Brian Cranford in your prayer. Keep the whole Cranford family in your prayer because God is using that family in a mighty way in the street preaching community. Because Brian is doing something different from everybody else. You think, well, he's, he's the same. No, he's not the same as everybody else. In fact, he was one of the guys I listened to two years ago, or a year and a half ago, says, don't be like everybody else. Be your own minister. I thought, oh, well, finally, somebody who validated my uniqueness. You know, I'm not going to show all the people interacting with people. I'm not going to show, because I'm out here for five hours today. Are you going to run this for five hours? Ain't no way. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a filmmaker. You know, I'm a preacher, you know, and I don't have, I'm by myself. I don't have a crew of guys uh, filming me and talking, you know. I mean, Monday's video, I had a chance to interview one of the guys, but uh, I'm by myself, you know. But it all goes back to doing what God told you to do. And how do you know what God told you to do? You pray. Pray, 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 pray. Build a lifestyle of prayer. I mean, today you know I'm I my <laughs> just like today you know a lot of people get up and they play around they dink around but not me every single morning seven days a week for decades I'm spending before the Lord within the first 30 minutes I'm on the face in the kitchen floor before the Lord and then I get up make my coffee I sit in my chair with my Bible and my paper and I have a meeting with God I work for God you know, so we have a conference meeting every single day, seven days a week. Why not? He's my boss. I work for him. I have for 47 years. And for the last 20, since 2001, since from the, the trade towers, uh, you know, they blew that up because they wanted the insurance money. Uh, uh, they wanted to, you know, that's a whole other story. I don't mean to go there. Sorry about that. Uh, people still believe that was a terrorist attack instead of friendly fire. But, uh, uh, it was during that time that I was failing for the last, for the sixth time of building this church. I'd failed. This is number seven. But this time, for some reason, I'm not failing. I don't know. Something's different this time. And uh, I started sitting down with the Lord with a legal pad and a paper and my Bible for like an hour to two hours every day, seven days a week. And that revolutionized my prayer life and my walk with the Lord. I tell you, my ministry took off from there because I was counseling with the Lord every day. Every day, every morning before I started my day, I sat down and I counseled with God. 
and a different type of prayer. I don't do anything like somebody else does. I, I pray and God shows me what to do. And if, God, if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, then you're not praying enough. If you think you're gonna follow some street preacher and he's gonna teach you how to preach out here, or you wanna get all excited about the uh, interaction of people scream, look, people scream and yell at me like they do every other street preacher. Yeah, they throw things at me like they do every other street preacher. Everything that's going on with other people and other street preachers goes on with me. I just don't put it on the video. Why? I'm not going to glorify what Satan is doing in other people's lives. We're all sin. They're sinners. Sinners sin. I mean, they, they don't know any different. That's why we pray for them. And uh, man, it's windy. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can. I can even walk around with this thing. That's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, right behind me is this big old tree. There's that. There's a big tree right there. That's kind of cool. Uh, what is behind me? It's a car lot. It's a BMW car lot thing. A lot of rich people in Boulder. A lot of poor people too. I step over my banner here. But, uh, you know, if you're in the ministry and you're trying to build a ministry all by yourself, listen to what I'm saying here, and what you're trying to do is become famous, okay? You're trying to get TV ratings, you're trying to get radio ratings, you're trying to get YouTube video ratings, you're trying to get podcast ratings, and you're trying to really, you know, be uh, somebody important. <laughs> Which a lot of preachers do. Their, their whole deal is see how important they can become. That's not mine. I've been a trucker all my life, and as a trucker, you're never important. You know, back in the 70s, we were called road kings because we stopped and helped people, you know. There was no cell phone, so you had to stop people on the highways because nobody come out and help them. There's no phone on the highway, you know. So trucks had to stop or wanted to stop. I stopped dozens and dozens and dozens of times for all kinds of things, you know, helping people out on the highways. When you're out in the middle of nowhere and a truck's rolling by, you want that trucker to stop and help. That's what I was doing, but when cell phones came out, you know, uh, we stopped stopping because, uh, you know, they called for help. You know, and then the whole trucking world changed in the 90s. And then it really changed when 2000 hit. It really changed. And uh, anyways, uh, I, I, I'm like this way because I get to look at the mountains. <laughs> you know, and the reason I'm at every corner I'm at, because every day I'm at a different corner. It's a seven week rotation, 37 different corners. Uh, another reason for that is because uh, that's where the Holy Ghost wanted me. I'm, if, he, if he wanted me to stand in some, from some bar, I prayed about that. No, I don't want you to stand there. Okay. Do you want me to stand in some nightclub? No, I don't want you to stand. Do you want me to go to the abortion clinic? No, I don't want you to go. I mean the prison. The, I mean all these different locations that a lot of street preachers go to. The Holy Ghost said, no, that's not where I want you to be. So should I go there? Should I go in front of the concert down at, at CU or the football game at CU at Folsom Stadium? Well, if God told me, yeah, I would go. But God said, no, don't go there. I don't want you to be there. You know, should I go on the Pearl Street Mall? No. I mean, I've prayed about all this. Should I stay on the university campus? There's, there's street preachers that fly into Boulder and scream and yell at all the students. They think they're making an impact. But what they're doing is causing harm to the preachers who live here in this city. Cause they're here for one day and they're gone you know it, it just i and it takes me weeks sometimes months to get the students to start talking to me again because they think i'm with them because i hold the big jesus sign and i'm on the street and i'm preaching and ministering talking to people and it takes me a month two three months sometimes after a street preacher leaves the cu campus because all they've been doing is screaming and yelling how horrible they are uh, you know, and now they won't talk to me. Now they treat me like they're treating him. Then after a few months, they say, oh, that guy's different. And now they start coming to me and I get to pray with people. I pray for probably a hundred people a week. A hundred a week, uh, six days a week, 10. Uh, probably, no, that's, a, that's exaggeration. That's probably, let's see, six times six, 30, probably around 40 people a week. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I mean face to face, you know, I pray for a lot of people, but I'm, I'm talking about 
face to face, you know, talking, ministering to people. So I want people, so I lift a banner for Jesus, my Jesus shirt. I'm gonna lift a Bible today. I'm not gonna get to this verse because this video will be too long, but you'll see it in the video. I'm gonna bring it up on the video so you can see what it is. It's the first Peter 3:17, I think. You see the Holy Ghost just said, no, I want you to read it. That's how sensitive you've got to be to the Spirit of God. It's noisy out here. I've got earplugs in, 20 mile an hour wind. And I can still hear the Spirit of God speak to me. He said, no, I want you to read it. Because my flesh said no. So let's read it. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. For it is better if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Did you get that? I'm going to say it one more time here, okay? 1 Peter 5, no, 1 Peter 3, 17 in the King James Bible, the only Bible I read, the only Bible you should be reading. Verse 17, For it is better if the will of God be so, that ye, all of you, suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing, in Jesus' name. So I wrote on my margin here, choose well-doing or evil-doing. Once again, God gives you a choice. I talked to the bus driver, Bruce. God bless you, Bruce. He see me on the streets all the time, and lo and behold, the Lord said, I want you to be on the 1122 bus, because I was going to take the 12 o'clock bus. Said, no, I want you to be 11. I said, all right, sir. I mean, you see, I work for God. <laughs> and so I went down there and got on the 1122 bus to head out here, and lo and behold, is the guy I saw uh, yesterday. <laughs> I said, wow on two different routes, same day. And I got a chance to talk to Bruce, and Bruce got a chance to give me his testimony, his story about his motorcycle wreck and how uh, he almost died and, and he was on his way to heaven. And God says, no, it's just not your time. I mean, what a story. In fact, I couldn't even sit down for the whole bus ride. He talked to me and we talked back and forth. What a glorious time on the bus today. What a glorious time praising God and giving testimony of the mighty and wonderful works from God. You see what we were doing on the bus? We were living, 1 Peter 3.17, we were well doing by doing the will of God. Let me read it one more time. 17, for it is better if the will of God be so. The will of God was so in that bus. The will of God was for me to be on that bus at 11.22. So I, you know, got ready. <laughs> I have to, you know, I shower, shave every day. I clean up, I'm going to work. I treat it as a serious job. I don't come out here with three days of beard growth on me and filthy, dirty clothes. I mean, I come out here clean and neat and ready for work because I represent Almighty God. I'm a soldier for Jesus Christ. I was a soldier for six years, three years active, three years reserve, inactive. I do service. police officers <laughs> I get police officers to wave at me every day and if I was doing something else I'm known as the peaceful preacher that's what I've been called the peace he's the peaceful preacher does that mean I'm not preaching the Word of God no not in a million years I'll have a thousand people saved this year 2021 I'll hit a thousand new souls going to heaven because of the work that God's doing here in this ministry it's amazing so what is, how many souls are going to be in heaven because what you did today and yesterday and since January 1, 2021? Huh? See, that's a question. You know? You can't save souls watching YouTube. <laughs> you can't do it. Doesn't mean that souls don't get saved, okay? I mean, I could tell you stories you wouldn't believe. I'm not going to do that right now. 1 Peter 3, 17. For it is better if the will of God be so. Bruce wanted to talk to me. God wanted me to talk to Bruce. God wanted me on the 1122 bus out to here, Foothills and Belmont. So we were doing the will of God and we were suffering for well-doing. 
Because I, I did want to come out an hour early. I wanted to come out because I'm still tired. I still had a, couple of work, a lot of work to do behind the scenes. So I had to get ready and get going. <laughs> How about that? For well-doing <clears throat> than for evil-doing. So in this case, and in today, what would have been an example of evil-doing? You got it? What would be an example of evil-doing? Living this verse today, Tuesday, May 25th, 2021, Boulder, Colorado, or wherever you're at, what would be the evil doing? You got it? It would have been listening to my flesh. Yeah, doing what my flesh wanted to do would have been evil doing because my flesh cannot glorify God. My spirit glorifies God, but my flesh is but dust. Is dust. That's how you have a choice. You can follow your flesh and all the lust thereof, or you can follow the Spirit of God that's in your spirit, and you can do the will of God in your life. And believe me, there's you're gonna suffer either way. Doing the will of God by the Holy Ghost, or not doing the will of God. I mean it's your choice. You can choose to do good, and you can choose to do evil. That's what we talked about on the bus. We were talking about 1 Peter 3.17 on the bus. <laughs> I mean, what a story. You know, living for God, no matter where you are. And people say, oh, I want to see you yelling at people. I want to see you preaching. I want to see them talking. You know, forget that. I'm not going to show you because it's not my desire. God's not giving me that desire. My desire, though, is I'll tell you one of my desires about other people, and that is to interview people on the street. That's what I did on Monday, and that's what I've done two or three other times. But it's very difficult. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. You know, it hasn't been available yet. Look at all these cars. There's cars there. There's a there's there's a whole look at these cars right here. All of these cars, I've got this bright green shirt on, this camera, they're all going to get a witness. There'll, there'll be an easy 5,000 people that go by me. People wonder about the numbers. Well, I'm not in some back alley. <laughs> I'm out where all the people are. A lot of people are. And my job is not to win souls. That's not what I'm doing. A lot of people think I'm out here trying to win souls. No. I'm interceding for the souls. I'm standing in the gap between their soul, all these souls, all these souls, and God. Because all too often, nobody is praying for lost souls. No one's praying. They're all, I don't know what they're doing. But I'm praying for the souls, and I'm praying for this city of Boulder. <laughs> and that's a heavy duty work. That's Ezekiel 22.30. In fact, I'll put this in the video, Ezekiel 22.30. If you look at it, it says, I found nobody. He didn't find another one person who would stand in the gap before him for the land. How many people has he looked for in your city to stand for your city? And he's found none. And how do you know? <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole nother story. But you see what it is? 1 Peter 3.17. So Lord, I thank you that your word is real, that your word is alive, that your word is working, that you've written your word for all people, saved and not saved. Because it's for the not saved to get saved. And it's for the saved, go do something for God. To get out and preach the gospel, to minister the spirit of God, to love on people, to clothe people, to visit people, to talk to people to edify and exhort and comfort people, to correct them, to reprove them. Do all those things, Lord. To encourage. On and on and on. And I thank you, Holy Ghost, for allowing me to do this video. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for this new monopod because it's real easy to hang on to it in the wind here. I thank you, Lord. And I pray for the people watching this video. And I thank you, Lord, they'll feel a, a great burden they feel a great burden to go do something for God. They just have this immense burden. 
and it's heavy. <laughs> and it'll be light if you go do it. Once you go do that burden, it'll become light. But right now it's heavy because you have to know the will of God in your life. And that heaviness that's coming from that weight of the anointing, that calling will sh push you out the door or push you to go do something or push you to pick up the phone or push you to go do something that God wants you to do. And when you go do that, that burden will become light because you're doing the will of God. You're doing the will of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. I kind of disappeared in my prayers. All right, man. Put my Bible there. God bless you. Here's uh, one more uh, tour of, uh, there's Vailmont, a lot of cars, Vailmont. This is uh, Foothills Parkway. Lots and lots and lots of cars all through here. This is a nice little area to stand. That's me, all right, let me get back in the frame there. Sorry about that. So it's gonna be a great day in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right, man, God bless you. I love you very much.